This is your ultimate guide to glowing up. We already established that you're hot and sexy. Hi, hottie. Let's make 2024 our year. I heard someone say that your physical is saying that you love yourself without saying you love yourself, you know? But don't get me wrong, of course I know that the glow up can only stick and be sustainable and truly improve your life once you glow up from within, mentally, you're so true to yourself. But hottie, let's be real, like who doesn't want to look good while doing it? I want to show you some things that I've been doing with my makeup to glow up. So the first thing actually are contact lenses. I mentioned these in another get ready with me, but I started wearing circle lenses. And to preface again, I do not hate my eyes, but I do really like the look that these contact lenses lens give so I don't want you to think that I'm trying to like change myself or anything while wearing these contact lenses the real fact of the matter is, is that I want to look like a doll like I just really love that kind of like sparkle in your eye they're exactly my eye color but what makes circle lenses different than normal contact lenses is that it enlarges your iris Ooh, you kind of see the difference I really really like them the heck, man? Damn, finally. When I'm talking to someone and I have eye contact with them, I can tell that they're really engaged with the conversation or at least like staring right at me in my eyes. I don't know if it's because I look crazy or if it's just I look cute. Hopefully it's because I look cute. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just saying whatever. <laughs> if you watched my last video, you would know that I just got this foundation and I really, really like it because I like the formula. It's super kind of serum-y. I also noticed a lot of people put foundation straight on their face from the pump. I really recommend doing it from your hand first so you can really control how much product gets actually on your face. It is way easier to blend and of course you don't want your makeup to look cakey. You want your skin to look like skin. Some people also like to blend their foundation like kind of like skincare. They're really rubbing it in but I don't know why when I do it when it mixes with my primer and my skincare it all pills up and there's like a lot of icky stuff that comes out. I don't know. So that's why I pat. See I just accidentally started rubbing in my foundation and then this came off of my skin like what is that? I don't want it. Hottie I need you to be so for real with me right now. When was the last time you cleaned your makeup brushes? Yeah, not only is having clean brushes hygienic, but also it helps your makeup look so much smoother because of course it's not built up with like months or even years of product buildup and dust and ew! I still have some more foundation on my hand, so I'm just gonna take a little bit and then go over some spots that kind of need extra coverage. Again, the key is to go in tiny, tiny layers. Ta-da! I feel like my skin still looks like skin. I'm glowing from within. Like, this is giving... Wait, did that rhyme? Yeah, it did! The sides of my nose, I don't know why. It gets oily, but also dry at the same time. Like, girl, choose one! For my brows, I've actually been using a kind of lighter shade. I used to use a dark brown eyebrow pencil, but now I just use, like, straight brown. Having lighter eyebrows just gives you a more kind and approachable appearance, so I'm gonna be using using a brow mascara actually just running it through and getting all those hairs in place it's a pretty subtle difference but i feel like you can see the change as someone with model lids or just like asian eyes in general it was so hard for me to find lashes that suited my face because literally these brands don't care about us like they're like whoa you guys don't even exist and with that being said if you didn't know i teamed up with an asian owned brand do lashes and designed the perfect lashes to complement asian eye shades not gonna lie people that have bought them with completely different eye shape than me said that they are the perfect lashes so if you want to go cop you totally can. But truly, if you don't buy them, that's okay. I just really, really need you to find lashes that fit and complement your eye shape. Because when they're too heavy, it's not really the look sometimes. I feel like it really closes off your eye and doesn't enhance them. This is what we're trying to do, guys. We're trying to enhance our feature. I love this next thing I'm gonna show you and it's called Eyoso. It's extremely popular in Asian makeup and in Korean, it translates to smiling eyes. Because when you smile, do you see how like this little crease under my eye? It's so adorable, warm, and inviting. So I like to take a little bit of a tan eyeshadow and just kind of emphasize that a little bit. And the reason why we're doing this with makeup is to emulate even when we're not actively smiling, we still look joyful. Even just with that, you can see that it kind of looks like I'm smiling even though I'm not. I'm not gonna lie, there is a fine line with it looking kind of like dark circles, so I do like to kind of drag it out a little bit to soften it. Then I take a little Eggersol pen. It's a really, really light brown color, and then just kind of smile, and then go over that crease. So cute. I do think it looks a little bit empty without bottom lashes, so I'm just gonna put mascara. If you don't make a crazy face while doing mascara, like, what are you doing? Finally adding some color and dimension to my face with contour because girl, my face was looking flatter than my chest before my boob job. Blush placement is so important to the way that your whole entire face or makeup looks. So I like to take this kind of dark pink blush and then I'm just gonna go in really, really lightly. I'm kind of my cheekbones actually. It's kind of like a subtle contour because if you put your blush too low, it really drags your face down. I 
adore this lipstick because it's kind of like a lipstick and lip gloss all in one. I'm really not gonna lie right now, like I'm looking cute. <laughs> in my opinion, I feel like sometimes your hair is more telling or just kind of more important than makeup. Like you could be stuffing face, but if your hair is giving rat's nest, I feel like it kind of diminishes your face card. That's what I've kind of deduced at least. I feel like I feel worse on my bad hair days versus my bad makeup days. So I want to show you a really, really easy 10 minute fake blowout kind of. Baddies have time management skills and we want to just look hot in the fastest way possible. I'm feeling adventurous today. I tried a little bit of a different bang look. It's like a little bit longer and sheer. I think it's really cute. For me, it takes me freaking ages to actually do a real blowout. Like first you gotta start off with wet hair, then you have to use both hands with a hair dryer and the round brush to curl it. Like really bold of me to think I have the arm strength for that. Come on. And yes, I have used one of those really popular blowout brushes, but tell me why, girl. It smells so bad and smoky whenever I use it. I don't know. Something about it just freaks me out. So what I do after sectioning my hair is I take a one and a half inch curling iron and then I just take the ends of my hair and then just leave it on for two to three seconds max. Obviously you don't want to fry off your hair. As you can see right here, it's super quick and easy. You're going to be looking like a cutie in no time. Over the past year or so, I've been getting compliments on my side profile and I'm like, should we kiss now or what? Like I'm getting shy. And I think I owe most of it to mewing. Potty, as you're sitting here right now, do you know where your tongue is? <laughs> Sometimes our tongue is resting on the bottom of our mouth. And when it is, our side profile or our double chin Looks like this. It's not really the most flattering. So what you want to do is you want to pretend like you're swallowing your tongue kind of. So you want to take your tongue and put it all the way up to the roof of your mouth and kind of try to push it back. I kind of wish I could show you like an x-ray scan. You also want to make sure that the back of your tongue is on the roof of your mouth. And once you change your tongue position, once you practice it enough and become conscious of your tongue position, which is so kind of weird, right? It truly becomes second nature. There also is a chance that this is just a natural position of your tongue. So yeah, that's my secret to a jawline. Okay, so we already established that your hot and sexy face card is not declining. Your hair is perfect. <laughs> is it? Is it though? Ugh, I really like this hairstyle, but it keeps getting stuck in my lips. Imagine a potential new friend or just like a cutie, you know, like a cutie just walking up to you. You talk to them and your breath stinks. <gasps> No, babes, we cannot let that happen. Oral hygiene is so important just for your health in general too, but who wants to have stinky breath? Mm. So I already know we're already brushing our teeth twice a day. I'm not gonna lie, in the past, I was not really good with flossing my teeth because I was like, girl, like this is too much. Like we're doing too much. But then I learned from a dentist that if you don't floss your teeth, it's basically the same as taking a sh and then only wiping your cheeks and not your butthole. <laughs> that analogy kind of changed my life. So make sure you're flossing your teeth as well. It doesn't stop there because the main component of bad breath is your tongue. So you wanna make sure that you're using a tongue scraper. No, because literally sometimes I'll go like really deep in. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh. Oh my god, I'm like gonna choke, but don't don't go too deep. Just, you know. <laughs> Afterwards, go with mouthwash. I like this fluoride one, and this one is alcohol-free. And to get those pearly whites, I like using pressed white shrimp. My teeth are pretty sensitive, so I only use these like a couple times a month. Also, they're dumb expensive. Like, why are these so... Oh my god. I know oil pooling is like all the rage on TikTok right now. I haven't personally tried it yet. I did order some. It's still coming in the mail. And I heard a lot of good things about it, so... I've recently been taking wellness shots. These are so easy to make. They're so expensive too if you want to buy them. I will put the recipe in here. Literally all you do is just blend it all together and then strain it. So usually in the morning, I'm kind of taking it late right now. I just pour a little bit. Oh, it's like so pulpy. I know I should have used like a cheesecloth to strain it out, but it'd be so for real right now. Do you really think I had a cheesecloth just laying around? This little shot is packed with so many good vitamins and antioxidants. It's so, so good for your body. And it's like not that much. It doesn't even taste that bad. Cheers. It's a really healthy and easy habit to implement into your routine. Good posture is not only good for your health, but it also radiates confidence. Like, oh, like I'm taking up space. Like my shoulders are back. Your outfits and your overall body just look so much better too when you have good posture. So this is what I look like with bad posture. Like it's not giving at all. So what you wanna do is bring your shoulders back. This is what I learned in ballet class. Obviously don't strain too hard, but the idea is that you want your shoulder blades to be touching or at least try to where you feel like you can stick a credit card in there and it will stay. When you're slouching and hunched over, you just look so like you want to be crawled into a ball. And I know that's what it feels like sometimes when we're in a new situation. But I promise you feel so much better once you straighten that back. Because tell me why ever since I was a teenager, I had back pain. I'm like, why am I 17 years old and I'm experiencing back pain? Say hi, hotties. 
So now that we look hot, we have to feel hot in our brains. <laughs> You know what I mean? Now it's time to get into the mental glow up. There's nothing more motivating or just like fun and inspiring than seeing your dream life visually, or I guess tangibly in this case. I made a digital one last year, but to me, like I'm a crafty girl at heart. I'm a DIY queen. I love scrapbooking. Like this is for my first year of college. Isn't that so cute? When it's like in real life like this, it just makes me feel some type of way. So I'm so excited to map out the dream life. If you don't know what a vision board is, basically you print out tons of pictures that inspire you or kind of emulate what you want your life to be like. I know because tell me why. Okay, I don't have a printer. But when I tell you, I was shocked. Um, who was gonna tell me that this was gonna cost $9? Why? Am I just cheap? But I feel like that's expensive. It's okay, this is for future me. I got this huge board because you know, dream big. My life is going to be so amazing and awesome that I can't just fit it onto a little piece of paper. The first thing I wanna get into is called an identity shift. Don't get it twisted though. I'm not saying that you have to completely change your identity and like, I don't know. Honestly, who even knows who they are at this point? But I learned this from the book, Atomic Habits. The key to building long lasting habits is creating a new identity. They're basically saying that your current habits or your current behaviors are simply a reflection of the person or the identity that you are right now. And to be the type of person that you believe that you are, you have to become that person either subconsciously or consciously. It's kind of like fake it till you make it, but you're not really faking it. You're just doing it until you make it. <laughs> I would tell to you straight girl, if you're just thinking about the person that you want to be and you're just fantasizing, you're like, ah, oh, like that would be cool, but that's never going to happen to me. What is just thinking about it going to do? Nothing. You have to keep in mind, nothing changes if nothing changes. <laughs> It makes it seem so much more attainable, especially since I got these pictures from Pinterest. It's possible for people to live these lives. Like I'm next. If someone asked about you, how would you want them to describe you? You're thinking about your dream life or your future life. I think it's really helpful to see yourself as like a different entity. Like, oh, that's Jasmine. I see myself being booked and busy. She's traveling. She has nurtured, well-maintained relationships. She looks like she's that girl, you know? She's well-groomed. Her fashion perfectly encapsulates who she is. All right, now that it sounds like I just said a bunch of shit, <laughs> How are we gonna get there? How did that girl achieve that life? Once you have these points and these goals that you wanna hit and it actually sinks in, you truly start to become more intentional with the decisions that you make. Well, most of my job is literally talking to a camera and staring at the computer for like 40 hours straight. To get where I wanna be, it's for the people that you know. And I know that this translates to a lot of career paths that you hotties dream about. And I'm so lucky and grateful to be invited to these spaces and events to be able to connect with really powerful people. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get real because because I got invited to a YouTube gala and I'm like, girl, I've never been to a gala before. What am I supposed to wear? I don't know what to do. But it was so important to me because it was an AAPI get together and I got to meet so many cool people. These are the people that made me feel comfortable with being Asian. It's just like, it really is so important to me. But tell me why I was just in a little corner, not being social because I didn't think I deserved to be there. And now that I look back on it, I'm like, if I didn't deserve to be there, I wouldn't have been invited. Oh, I hate these, why? Ooh. Hard work and determination is something that you should never regret. When things in my life don't particularly go my way or if I'm just like, damn, like did I have to work that hard? Like did I have to do all that? It's okay to be disappointed in the outcome or the result, but you should never feel regretful in the process of what got you there. From Atomic Habits, I learned, first we already decided the person we wanna be, the identity shift. And number two, you have to prove it to yourself with small wins. For me, I wanna be a better friend. That's your identity and your small win and the thing that will help you achieve that goal is maybe every Saturday calling a friend. With whatever goal that you have, I'm really rooting for you. I know it's really scary. I'm kind of scared, but at the same time, how am I going to be the Jasmine that I see in my head if I don't change things, if I don't challenge myself? Drum roll, please. Ta-da! This is what it looks like. It took me like an hour, but I'm really proud of it. Like, oh my God, I kind of did that. I wrote Jet Setter right here because I want to travel this year, hopefully. Well, I guess 2024. I have some jewelry here because I feel like it'd be such a dream to come out with my own jewelry line. I mean, I feel like it would just make so much sense. Hitting 1 million subscribers is probably my biggest goal. I really believe in myself and I know that if I say consistent and have discipline, we can make it happen. It's actually insane to see all of my dreams on this poster right here, but I have Lucky Girl as well because I'm a huge proponent for Lucky Girl Syndrome. If you 
don't know what that is, it's basically just kind of like the law of assumption or just when good things happen to you, like duh, of course they happen to you. Like you're just that girl, like you're a lucky girl. In my opinion, it's just about having so much confidence in yourself and your abilities and also the universe for putting things into place. In my opinion, if you're confident and humble, like there's no downside to that, you know? Journaling is so good for the mind and the soul. It's really important to do end of the year prompt. You have to go into the new year with a purpose and goal. But you can't really do that until you reflect on yourself first, understanding the starting point that you're at and working through that. You have to know where you are now to be able to improve. It's also just really lovely to look back on. I do like to do monthly journaling just because when you make huge goals for the whole entire year, it feels like, damn, like these are really, really big. When you break them down month by month, it makes it a lot easier to celebrate those wins because yeah, probably Probably in January, you're not gonna achieve your entire year's worth of goals, right? It helps reassure you that you're making progress. I've actually already made my July 2024 little monthly check-in. I'm gonna put in some bucket list items, some goals, um, social media goals because it's my job. But I think the most important part about this is reflecting on your successes and the happy moments because again, I feel like we can dwell on the negativity or just like, oh, I'm like not achieving these goals, like nothing happened in my life. This is my favorite section to look back on. Another part of it is difficulty but the important part is moving on. You can acknowledge your downfalls and kind of just things that happened in the month because of course they're inevitable, but the important thing is, is how you're going to fix that. What are solutions to these obstacles? And then I just threw the favorites part in there because it's really fun to reflect on. I'm really proud of it. I think it looks adorable because I'm really not gonna lie, girl, if it's not cute, I'm not gonna look at it. You have your goals, you have your dream, and you're so motivated. It's the beginning of the year, you know, new year, new me. But then maybe a couple months go by and you're like, oh, like it's fine, I can slack off just a little bit. And then you just don't do the habits anymore. I know we've all been there, I'm guilty of it as well. I cannot tell you how many habits I've tried to implement in January and it was going so well. I was like, wow, this is my year, babes. And then something would happen in February and I would just be like a potato. When making these habits, you have to make them easy. What I mean by that is you have to make it easy to do. You don't want it to feel like a chore you don't want it to feel forced because that's just not sustainable at all and then that will just set you back from your goals. I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna sound a little bit harsh, but you can't just rely on being motivated. That's not enough. Because just like how I said before, in the beginning of the year, we're so motivated, you have this like spark inside of you, like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna be awesome. And then as the year goes by, your motivation dwindles, but you didn't have the concrete steps to make your goals a reality. So for me, I've been wanting to work out more, but I'm just gonna be so for real with you right now. I do not like the gym. But what I can do for myself is be honest and just knowing that, okay, I don't like to go to the gym. What else can I do? Instead of jumping into things really, really fast, for me, I like doing home workouts, but honestly, sometimes I'm even too lazy to do a little home workout, like for 15 minutes. I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. I'd rather just sit on my couch. So what I've been doing is literally working out on my couch. I'm like, okay, I'm a couch potato because at this point I have no excuse. I still have freedom to like watch videos or movies or something, but I can just be doing arm circles the entire time. You know, it's better than nothing. Yeah, maybe one day I'll be a gym girly or I'll be a Pilates princess or something. Oh my gosh, that'd be so cute. But it all comes down to being patient with myself, but also challenging. Does that make sense? One of my biggest flaws is that I'm perfectionist. And if I'm not doing something 110, 120%, I feel like it's not worth doing at all. When I'm not allowing myself to take those little steps, I feel like that's just self-sabotage. Shifting the way that you think about your routines or your habits is such an easy way to romanticize even the, like these really boring things. We're here to have fun, okay? We don't want to beat ourselves up too much. If you just feel like you're in a little movie, you're like, I am that girl. I'm the main character. Oh my gosh, I'm washing my dishes. Wow, like, like I'm literally Cinderella right now, you know? And with that, I hope you have a great 2024. I'm ready for us. I'm so excited for this new year. I feel like 2023, there was a lot of highs, but babe, there was a lot of lows for me. So I'm really, really hoping that 2024 is a great, great year for all of us. Thank you so much for supporting me for this entire year. I appreciate you so much. Or if this is your first video, welcome to the Hottie Club. Let me know some of your goals for the new year and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, love you. Mwah.